block. Today uh, should be an interesting day. I'm headed north on PCH going up to Paradise Cove. I've been invited to a, an event that is put on by the Malibu Connections. Well, it's called the Malibu Connections Breakfast. Uh, and it's put on by Anthony McDemus, who is uh, someone I work with at the Malibu Times. I'm going to find out a little bit more about it. I don't know that much about it, but it's kind of a networking event. It happens every single month, uh, maybe twice a month, something like that. And they have a breakfast at Paradise Cove, which I always like going to because Paradise Cove is awesome. Then a little bit later, I'll be having coffee with a friend of mine, uh, Linda. So uh, you'll get to meet her. We're going to be talking cars. As in, she needs a new one. And I'm the guy. Without further ado, let's do Put, them on, put on by the chamber? Yes, yes, it's the, it's the uh, uh, second uh, Wednesday of the month and we do our connections breakfast here at Paradise Cove. And what's the, what's the point of all this? Uh, just to network and get interesting speakers about what's going on in Mallory. Uh, we've got hoteliers, we've got uh, people that uh, run restaurants. Uh, Bob and uh, Terry Morris have been really supportive. Um, and then of course then our speakers are very interesting. We've got Laura Wilson from last month and this month we've got uh, Richard Weintraub and his partner who are building the Malibu Memorial Park. And, you know, actually this is the first time I've heard about that. I didn't even know that was happening, which is, which is very cool. And when are they going to start building? How, what's the time frame? We're going to find out. Okay, so it's, it's about, very soon. Yeah. Very soon, and yeah. it's right at the corner of PCH and Malibu Canyon. So. Nice. So some good development. Yeah. We need parks and things like that. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Final yeah. resting Thank fun. you for putting this on. Yeah. Thank you. Great Paul, uh, infamous uh, gentleman on the vlog here. Um, we're going to do something fun next week. Yes, we are. We're going to go out and look at some houses. Yes. And you can see how broker caravan works for the brokers. <laughs> I don't Sounds know what that horrible. means. I don't know what that means at all. But basically, you go and scope out other houses that other real estate guys have on the market. That's right. And They're hoping I'll bring a buyer okay. or a tenant for them. And we'll have an opportunity to put on some lovely blue booties, probably, as we tromp through these houses. So, I mean... Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So, we get, awesome. how, many, how many houses do we get to look at? I don't know. How many do you want to see? Okay. Well, we get the whole day. So Wednesday, we're going to do this maybe next we'll week. We'll see what happens. Okay. In your new Mercedes. In my new Mercedes. As long as it comes back from the dealership. If it ever comes back from the dealership. This afternoon. But right now, uh, I'm going to go over and meet a friend of mine, Linda, at Cafe Lux. Is going to be buying a new car, I guess, and she wants to talk about options. So, we'll see. This is my buddy, Linda. She is a, a true badass on many levels. And uh, n not levels I'm going to necessarily talk about right now. But, uh, no. Uh, but um, you want to say hi to anybody? Hi, Tim. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> That's about it, I guess. Okay, we're having coffee. And tea. And tea. north on PCH going up to Oxnard to the Mullen Museum. I've taken you guys there before, uh, I think once here on the blog. And the Mullen Museum is a, uh, it's like the Peterson Museum, but it's all French cars. I have a whole new exhibit that's going in and uh, they've invited us to come out and check it out. They just don't know I'm bringing all you guys. <laughs> but the cars are amazing. Uh, you're going to be totally impressed. It's going to be a total French thing. Ho, ho, ho. 
can't stop traffic. Ow! Museum, which it, it's hard to describe because it's 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 an art museum, right? You know, but it's full of four-wheeled pieces of art, right? But this is a, this is a very unique exhibit. To right. Me. So tell me tell me what this is and how long it's going to be here. So the title for the exhibit is the Art and Times of the French Coach Builders. So we're really focusing on art deco and the coach builders and the beautiful art deco cars of that time. What's the time period? You know? Typically our exhibits are here for a year. I mean, we have as early as a 1800s carriage, okay. uh, but a lot of it is 20s and 30s. Okay. Hard to go. Good. All right. So we're going to walk around and, and I have my own private tour, which is Tessa. Uh, very VIP. Very cool. And then there's going to be a lunch and, uh, and we just get to poke around. Okay. automobiles, particularly pre-war. How did those cars get created in the 30s by the French? Why the French? What did they mean? And so that caused me to run and learn more about the period. And of course it turned out that that was the beginning of the Art Deco period. It happened in 1925 in Paris, right next to, near the Eiffel Tower, where the whole notion of turning uh, science and art together into taking useful items, a car, a vacuum cleaner, a radio, why does it have to be ugly to be good? Why, why doesn't someone think about the modern designs of a very interesting object that we all know and love? The obvious center of that would be the automobile. So the French took it on basically themselves to create a, a new artistic sense of what combination of science engineering and shape and sculpture could actually produce.
great. <laughs> of course you are. You have all these toys you get to play with. That's true. You know, everywhere. But, you know, you just uh, revealed to me your favorite car, which is over here, the teardrop. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, it's maybe Fagoni's finest uh, effort. Uh, and it's called the goat dough, uh, which is the French word for teardrop. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that if you look up in the sky at a raindrop, or you look down a beautiful woman's cheek at a teardrop, what you see is that line. Right. It is the perfect line in nature, known as a Fibonacci curve. Right. And so Fagoni didn't start with blank pieces of paper and said, what should I design? He said, why don't I look around and see what God designed, and maybe I'll get an inspiration. That's how it works. So the yep. teardrop was the perfect shape is that is that it, what it spoke to you when you first saw it? Perfect shape as yeah. it comes through the sky because right. the water yeah. takes the shape of what could slip by the atmosphere right. the easiest. Yeah. In fact, that actually that story appealed to me when right. I saw the car. I said, "That's the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen." Wow! And, and how long have you had I that? I learned more about Fagoni, and, and of course, it all connected. Uh, yeah. I've had it I mean, 15 years. Yeah, uh, I, 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 the gratitude I feel for you guys inviting me up here to see this. Uh, tremendous. Amazing. Uh, to be able to share that with our audience and everyone else. Um, well, you're it, a great car guy, Carbo, and, you're, and your audience you. is, uh, you know, obviously passionately committed. So, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a pleasure for us to be part of it. Well, I appreciate your time. I know you got everyone dragging you in every direction. So, thanks again. Okay. Good to see you. Take care. Okay. Delage. It's now a Delage ERA. Started life out as a Delage race car and it was owned by Prince Bira of Thailand. And he is still one of the only people from any of the Asian islands to be a successful racing driver. But this was a lot of car for him. And so he didn't drive it for very long. And the next owner blew up the engine. Delage was out of business. So they put an ERA engine in it, English Racing Automobiles. the million franc Delahaye, the Delahaye 145. The French were tired of being beat by the Germans in racing, so the French racing committee said, we'll take a dollar from everyone's driver license fee and put it in a pot, a million francs. And it was a time trial. All the companies, they had to go 16 laps at Montreux. And Rene Dreyfus drove this car, and he was the winner and he went to beat the Germans at Poe and at Cork. Hitler knew about this, and he wanted the car, and he wanted the driver, to use them. But Dreyfus is a Jewish last name, so Lucy Schell, the head of the Akira Blue team, sends him to the US to race, and he stayed. And he had a restaurant in New York for the rest of his life called Le Chant de Claire. And the car was hidden apart in a bunker. Museum today looking at extraordinary <laughs> extraordinary cars uh, I just spent the last hour hour and a half walking around with Tessa Crane who is uh, the expert knowledgeable one um, and uh, we had a blast I didn't want to shoot while she was talking too much because uh, uh, it would interrupt the flow but I just wanted to go back to some of these cars and show you look at look at this this is this is an amazing car. Um, the, this is all wood, but these are all copper rivets. Check this out. Way too much information. Um, this thing carried uh, hunting dogs in the back. Look at that. Yeah, that's really cool. It's overwhelming. Uh, Peter's collection, which has been assembled over many, many years. Uh, this is original, not, not restored. So many, so many things. You may recognize this from the Peterson Museum. You guys have seen some of those. Racing car, my God. I'm just like, my neck is starting to be sore. But my favorite, my personal favorite, is this Delahaye from the uh, New York World's Fair. <laughs> this right here. 
is a 1936 Bugatti Type 57C Atlantic. That is probably the prized piece in this collection. Uh, it's, got, it's got rivets uh, instead of uh, welds because it's a magnesium body and you can't weld magnesium. So uh, it's got rivets. And this, this one is Peter's favorite. Uh, pretty spectacular. That's kind of weird. I'm here, but I'm also... What a seriously cool day I have had today. Uh, you know, it's sometimes it hurts so good to be me. I get to do things like lip. I don't know what that is. That's French. The art and times of the French coach builders from the Mullen Automotive Museum. Uh, spectacular. Remember, I showed you that car. What a great time. What a spectacular time. It's, it's really amazing to be able to hang out with such automotive creative people. Everybody has a connection with the infinite and that source, that spark inside them that wants to be creative and wants to do fun stuff like this. Uh, everybody's creative. Ruby, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You just have to decide. You have to focus. You have to decide what is it that I'm passionate about and then follow that passion. It could be coffee. It could be cars. It could be, um, men's underwear. I don't know. Ruby, that's an idea. Just throwing that out there. Do what you love, people. Do what you love and love what you do. And incredible things will happen. I promise. See you guys tomorrow. Yes.